Alrighty guys, the XCon here, and welcome to my most anticipated games of 2019, well, my top 10 most anticipated games of 2019, there's uh, several other games I'm, I'll be mentioning, but uh, yeah, uh, usually I do my top games of, you know, the year, this before I do my most anticipated games, but uh, you know, I haven't beaten Red Dead Redemption 2 yet, and that's, you know, just want to at least either get farther into it, or, you know, try to beat it before I do that, so I can give it a clear, you know, if it's number one spot, number two spot, or even farther up the list, but anyways, you know, that'll probably be coming in a couple of weeks, uh, that's, you know, depending, but, um, yeah, but now, I'm talking about games that are coming out in 2019, or at least might come out in 2019. I uh, usually want to do these lists, it's, you know, gets delayed and then doesn't come out, and then, you know, that's on the list the next year, like Red Dead, Redem Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, yeah, uh, a couple of the games are on the list this year. We're on the list last year. Um, not as many as could have been, but there was some. Uh, surprisingly, I, I would say a good bit of the games were actually announced in 2018. Um, so yeah, you know, I'm just getting into some other quick mentions real quick. Um, no certain order some other games what are supposed to come out this year when I'm interested in uh, so there's Gears of War 5 uh, you know if, it, if Gears of War 4 was better uh, Gears of War 5 would actually probably make the top 10 but Gears of War 4 wasn't my favorite game and I'm not that excited for Gears of War 5 as, you know, I was Gears of War 4, so it's knocked up a little bit. Um, also, Gears of War Tactics, or Gears Tactics, whatever it is, you know, the XCOM uh, kind of Gears of War game might come out this year. I don't know if it's actually coming out this year. To be honest, I'm probably actually more excited for that than Gears of War 5. Um, so, there is that. Um, then there's Wolfenstein Young Blood, which continues the current Wolfenstein series. Interested in that. So I need to catch up on those Wolfenstein games, so. That's another thing, if I was actually played all of them, then maybe I'd be higher up, but, um. Yeah, and then... Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel, just a remaster of Crash Team Racing, the original one. So yeah, that that's probably my least anticipated there. Um, and Animal Crossing, whatever it's gonna be called, uh, you know, on the Switch. Excited for that. One there, um, then some Ubisoft games, uh, Skull and Bones, I believe that actually made the top 10 list last year, but, uh, this year, definitely, uh, went up a little bit, then, um, Trials Rising, interested in that one, probably won't be a day one buy, but I'll, I'll probably eventually get around to it, then, um, Far Cry New Dawn, always interested in the Far Cry games, I haven't played 5 yet, so, um, you know, and this is kind of like a sequel to 5, so, really like an expansion, that's what it's more like, I guess, so, you know, I really, you know, not too excited there, if I played 5, enjoyed it, I might have been higher. Um, then Dying Light 2, uh, 
I still need to play the high light one. And once again, if I actually played it, maybe that would be a bit higher. Who knows? Um, then Rage 2. I'm interested in that. The first Rage wasn't the greatest game. So, you know, but, which, it's kind of surprising that it got, it's getting a sequel, but from what I've seen from the game so far, it actually looks, you know, pretty interesting there. And then, um, out of all of these, the one I'd probably say I'm most anticipating, Ghost of Tsetsuma, I believe is how you pronounce it, which is a, uh, like, samurai game from, uh, Sucker Punch, the developers of the infamous titles, which, you know, are some pretty good games there, so I'm interested in that. Which that reminds me with infamous, um, I don't know why Sony hasn't ported over infamous 1 and 2 to PlayStation 4. Um, I'd really like porting those games over, uh, please, and... Um, anyways, that's it there. Um, also, I guess some other games I'll mention real quick. What I don't think will come out this year, but I'm definitely anticipating them. Uh, oh, they're probably not coming out, but, uh, and one that probably isn't actually ever coming out, sadly, but, uh, you know, there's Starfield from, uh, from Bethesda Game Studios. Is there... IP with sci-fi. Yeah, interested in that. I you know, quite enjoy sci-fi, so yeah. Then number two, Halo Infinite, which is a new Halo game. Excited for that one. And then uh, Death Stranding, Hideo Kojima's new game. Seems interesting. Not really sure what it's about, so yeah, and I probably will say it's not coming out. And then um, a game which, if it actually was going to come out, it would have made the top ten, possibly even top three, but uh, it's kind of canceled right now. It'll be the Wolf Among Us season two. I'm hoping to God. A company picks it up, like, um, I haven't for the Walking Dead final season, so it's a little bit different, because it was, you know, actually from the, uh, Walking Dead creators studio, so, yeah, um, uh, you know, I really hope the company picks the game up, because the first Wolf Among Us is, a uh, Incredible game. You, sh you should go play it. Um, and, you know, if sadly Telltale being defunct, I might never ever, ever get to see The Wolf Among Us Season 2, which is uh, quite a big bummer. Um, so, yeah, anyways. Let's jump into my actual most anticipated top 10 list of 2019. We're already like 8 minutes into the fucking video. <clears throat> so that's right there. But coming in at number 10, that's going to be Luigi's Mansion 3. Which is a sequel to the Luigi Mansion game that came out on the 3DS. And actually a sequel to the incredible GameCube game, Luigi's Mansion. Uh... I'm quite excited for it. Uh, I don't know too much other than a quick little teaser trailer. Um, what, at least a couple months ago. So yeah, I'm excited for that. I really enjoyed Luigi's Mansion back, you know, when that came out in the GameCube. Never played the uh, one on the DS or the 3DS. I might give it a go. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But, um. Yeah. Moving on to number nine. That's going to be The Outer Worlds. Which 
is a game from um, Obsidian, right? Obsidian. Let me double check that. I want to say it's Obsidian. Uh, who you know created Fallout New Vegas and why not? Yeah, it's Obsidian. You know, like, this is their new kind of sci-fi RPG, which from the looks of it looks like it'll kind of play out like Fallout, you know, like Fallout New Vegas, which is what you know, gets me excited for the game uh, the most, because I really enjoyed Fallout New Vegas and obviously all the other Fallout games. Uh, so, yeah, um... Yeah, it definitely does look interesting. Uh, we got too much on it from uh, I've seen. That the only thing I saw was the uh, trailer at the Game Awards. So yeah, um, yeah, but just makes me excited. To just uh, fall out looking this of it and it's, it's like sci-fi which I really enjoy so yeah anyways moving on to number eight that's gonna be Doom Eternal which is the sequel to the 2016 game Doom 2016 so yeah uh, so far when I've seen that it looks great it's, I haven't gotten around to playing the Doom 2016 yet <clears throat> so you know but there's also another game where I haven't played the previous titles of it which I'm still excited for so yeah but you know it looks interesting but it's just fun to me doom games are fun so yeah not much else to say there, but let's move to number seven, which that's going to be Pokemon for the Switch, or I guess Pokemon Generation 8, whatever they're going to call it. It's supposed to come out this year. Don't know if it is coming out this year, but yeah. Um, you know, I really enjoyed the Pokemon games. No, I mainly played the yeah, like Game Boy Advanced, like Gen 3 mainly, and gets a little bit of the Gen 4 games. Uh, obviously, I have played Gen 1 and Gen 2. You know, I really haven't, I think I've touched like Gen 5 and 7 at all. I did play through the um, Pokemon Y, or Gen, Gen 6. You know, now on the Switch, it can do, you know, big things now. Just thinking, like, um, Mario Odyssey or, uh, Breath of the Wild, but for Pokemon, it can be a real winner there, and possibly a game of the year. Um, depending on what the rest of these next six games, if... These next six games either come out and are stinkers or don't come out at all. Then it'll probably be like Pokemon probably be game of the year. If it lives up to what I am imagining. Um, obviously there really isn't much, but you know, I kinda hope it's uh you know more open Pokemon game, and not a, uh, you know, linear one like all the other ones, uh, you know, just, you know, like, an open world Pokemon, like Breath of the Wild, where it has, a, you know, lots of adventuring, you know, and it's Pokemon, that's something that, you know, 
like I said, it could be game of the year worthy. Uh, definitely for anyone who uh, played and enjoyed a Pokemon game. Um, so yeah, if that game lives up to my expectations for right now, it's kind of me just saying what I want it to be because we really don't have much info on it. Um, you know, it could be an entirely different type of game. But um, let's move into the number six spot, which was on the list last year. In fact, it might have been the same exact spot. Metro Exodus comes out in a couple of weeks, and I'm excited to play it. I still need to go through and beat 2033 and then Last Light, so probably won't be playing it on launch, but, you know, definitely be probably playing it soon. But, um, you know, I'm really interested in it. The Metro franchise has, you know, been one like a game series it's been on my radar for a long time now and I just finally getting around to it uh to be honest like I think I purchased uh whatever 2033 and last light like 2015 2016 and I've, I've owned the games for a long ass fucking time and I'm finally now just getting around to them uh you know, and then I'll play Exodus when that, once I eventually beat Last Light. Um, so yeah, I, I find it to be a very interesting concept. So yeah, um, anyways, let's move into number five spot. I, I probably talked about Metro already last year, definitely, but uh, yeah, anyways, number five. This game's already out. I already bought it, and I can already play it. Just haven't started yet. But that is Resident Evil 2 Remake. So, yeah. Um, been a... I would say a huge fan of the Resident Evil franchise. I, I guess fan... Or, I guess, I guess I consider myself more casual towards it. I definitely haven't played... Completion all of them. I've at least like played a little of most of them. Uh, Resident Evil Two, I'd probably say is the least amount I've played of one. I'd probably say, and you know, so I'm gets me excited for it because I really haven't played it to completion. Um. So yeah, that's you know quite exciting there, and because you know the Resident Evil games, like you know the first three, are good games but not super playable nowadays. But uh, the controls are just a bit too uh, you know odd. You know you go from a game with comes out nowadays and you go back and try to play it and it's you know it's whatever so I'm excited to play Resident Evil 2 and be kind of going into it a bit more blind I would say uh, you know the Resident Evil franchise has you know can really kind of making a bit of a comeback after Resident Evil 5 and 6, which aren't good, uh, you know, or at least aren't good Resident Evil games, I would say, uh, you know, Resident Evil 7 was, you know, a pretty damn good game, I really enjoyed that one, and you know, Resident Evil 2, it's already a good game. Just being remade and made to modern standards, so yeah, interested in getting into that one. But now let's jump into the final four 
games that are coming out, supposedly. Or, well, I, in fact, I believe two of them actually don't even have Northern Lights. At least two of them are supposedly coming out this year. The other two could come out this year. I 100% hope they come out this year. But they're probably going to be on the list next year. So, um, in fact, uh, some, some of these games, two of these games were on the list last year. But let's jump into number four. And that is the sequel to one of the greatest platformers ever. Super Meat Boy Forever, and that's supposed to come out in April, I believe, uh, right now, but, um, you know, if it was a direct, not, well, not direct, but a, like, you know, same play style as Super Meat Boy, it would be my most anticipated game, it would be number one, uh, but because of the gameplay being a little bit different, you know, being, like, I guess endless, or well, not endless, but a constantly moving platformer, and not a, you know, you get to control everything about the character, then, you know, it would be my number one, which, if they do make another Super Meat Boy game, what's like that, then it will probably be my most anticipated game, but you know, Super Meat Boy 1 is, you know, a very good game. It's obviously not an easy platformer, but it's one I just oddly fell in love with, uh, you know, after watching, you know, I really say it's kind of like one of the first games when I, like, really because I saw videos of it online and then I ended up falling in love with the game and it's in my like top 10 games of all time list so yes yeah, so I'm obviously insanely excited for Super Meat Boy Forever and you know I, I been waiting for it for a couple of years now, or since I announced it, so, yeah, I'm excited that I could possibly be here in just a few short months, you know, right around my birthday also, so that's even better there, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm just excited to play new Super Meat Boy levels after I've played on each level of Super Meat Boy several times over. Um, so, let's jump into number three. Another game really doesn't have too much info, but it's mainly because of the franchise, and I'd say the developer too also helps, but uh, that is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is, I guess, you know, it's a game set in the Star Wars universe, my favorite universe of all time. Developed by Respawn Entertainment, who made the excellent Titanfall 2, uh, which you should watch my Let's Play ended of that recently. Uh, you know, and you play a Padawan after Order 66, so during the time of the Empire. Jedi were getting hunted down. So, you know, that's quite a, that really does intrigue me there. Um, you know, getting to actually be the character instead of watching or reading about a character. You know, you actually get to be character. I will say EA hasn't been doing a good job with the Star Wars license. Uh, Battlefront 2015 was quite yucky. Uh, Battlefront 2 was a better game with one of the worst progression systems to ever come out in a 
a video game and some of the worst microtransactions to ever come out in a video game and one of the worst bus business decisions to ever come from a video game for what's sixty dollars uh, and the story was kind of whatever so and this game from what it seems like is a story first game I wouldn't be surprised if they put in a multiplayer mode, but uh, definitely seems like it's story first. I could be wrong because we don't have too many details on it, but yeah, I, I, I'm just excited. I'm hoping that uh, EA can put out some more Star Wars games. I have had the license for almost six years now, and they've put out two. Mediocre games, uh, so yeah, I'll continue playing Battlefront 2 for the free updates, but you know, I, I hope Fallen Order's good and I'm excited for it, as it's obvious. So I put it in the number three spot here. Um, and you know, EA, you know, they're just quite a poo-poo company, but, yeah, anyways, let's move to number two, same as last year, The Last of Us Part Two. uh, The Last of Us is easily one of my favorite games of the 2010s, uh, uh it was my game of the year 2013, and sequel to my favorite game of the 2010, or one of my favorite games of the 2010s, not my favorite game of the 2010s, but, you know, I'm just excited to see where the characters of Ellie and Joel go, and, you know, the new characters what get introduced, and Maybe some old characters returning also. Eh. I hope it comes out this year. I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't, but yeah. Um yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed The Last of Us. I will say with Last of Us Part Two, hopefully there's some better, you know, gameplay improvements over The Last of Us. Uh, you know. And I've seen an improvement of s story. Obviously, that's not saying it's The Last of Us story is bad because it's an excellent story. Just hoping it's even better, I guess would be the better term there. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited for that one, uh, and, you know, Naughty Dog, definitely one of my top developers, you know, with the Uncharted franchise and whatnot, so, yeah, anyways, let's move into my most anticipated game of 2019, what probably won't come out in 2019. But that is Cyberpunk 2077 from developer CD Projekt Red, who did The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, which is my favorite game of the 2010s. It's that it's an excellent title. You can watch my Let's Play. Um, so yeah, and Cyberpunk 2077, it's a cyberpunk game. That's the genre, and it's also the name. Uh, Guess Blade Runner would be a uh, thing what you could think when you see it. That's the best example. Obviously, pretty different, but yeah, you know, just in other RPG esque game from them. I really enjoyed The Witcher Three. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, Probably top three. I really, really 
join it. Um, yeah, and the gameplay demo was released a few months back. Uh, it's fucking excellent for Cyberpunk 2077. You know, I'm just, you know, really excited to go into that world and what could possibly be one of the greatest games of all time or one of the biggest upsets of all time or something that's pretty good but not as good as Witcher 3 or something that's pretty good a little better than Witcher 3 but not the greatest game of all time you understand all these games one of these games could be game of the year which could Falling in my honorable mentions. And as or a game that's not even on the list could be my game of the year. Or Cyberpunk 2077 could be my game of the year, which if it comes out this year and you know, lives up to that expectation, that excitement I have for it, then it's gonna be game of the year for me. But um yeah, uh, this video went on way too fucking long. I did not want it to go on this long. I might cut cut it down. Uh, I'll probably cut out some bullshit. I probably won't actually. What am I talking about? I don't properly edit. <laughs> Alright, yeah. Well, let me see. How long did I... How long were the uh, ones from previous years? Eh, okay, here are about 20 minutes, so... Yeah, this is a bit longer than that, but I did mention a lot more honorable mentions, so... Yeah, anyways, um, Cyberpunk 2077, my most anticipated game there. Really excited for it. Hopefully it comes out this year. Please come out this year. Um, actually don't, because there's lots of these games I want to play, and, um, yeah, and I'm going to have to pick. And then, maybe not get around to playing the other ones, so, yeah. It's a lose-lose. When when I get I really don't know. Yeah. Um. Anyways, so I'm rambling on now, and I want to play Resident Evil 2. So you can watch, catch my let's play of that, which will be coming. But uh. Anyways, I have been the Exxon, and I'll see you guys in the next one.